Welcome back to Simple Truth. Hey, we're in the story of David. We're in 1 Samuel chapter 18. We're at the part where he's defeated Goliath and all things are great. And he's out fighting battles and things are going well and things are going wonderful. And all of a sudden, uh, something happens with the king that he's serving, right? Saul gets displeased about some things that are being said about him and David. People giving honor and praise to who honor and praise is doing, but we see the switch. God has said that the anointing is now on David. Saul recognizes the anointing of God. He's had the anointing of God, so he recognizes it. And the enemy is now sent a spirit to oppress him. We're picking it up in verse 10. It says, The next day a harmful spirit from God rushed upon Saul. He raved within his house while David was playing the lyre, as he did day by day. Saul had a spear in his hand, and Saul hurled the spear, for he thought, I will pin David to the wall. But David evaded him twice. So again, David was brought in to take care of Saul because of the evil spirit. That when he played his harp, it made Saul relaxed. It made Saul feel better. Wow, well, part of that's because it was the spirit of the Lord that was on David. And so as David's anointing is singing and playing the harp, everybody's going to get to benefit from that, right? That's how it works. So Saul is, is jealous. This jealous spirit is now oppressing him. It's his fault. He's allowed this to happen. And rather than taking responsibility, repenting and throwing himself on the mercy and the grace of God, he's doubling down. He's going to get what he wants, which is, if I can get rid of David, then I'm going to be okay. So as David is sitting there playing the harp to, to uh, you know, appease Saul, to calm him down, the evil spirit that was in, that rushed into Saul, upped it up a notch. Suddenly Saul takes a spear. Suddenly he throws it, right? Suddenly he throws it at David thinking, if I can pin him against the wall, I'm going to take care of all of my problems, right? But it doesn't work. David is saved most likely by God twice, twice in this thing. Listen, again, we need to understand both sides of this. The first thing is Saul should have repented. Saul should have asked God for forgiveness. He should have recognized this isn't a good thing. And he should have also recognized you can't fight against the anointed. And you shouldn't fight against the anointing. You're not going to win. David, we could say, what in the world are you doing there? When his spear gets hurled after the first time, you should probably run away from him. But David, David is doing that, which he feels God is calling him to do. He also fiercely loves somebody. Do you know that when we fiercely love somebody, sometimes we do not recognize that which is oppressing, that which they're going through. We make excuses for, oh man, they're just having a bad day. Oh man, they're doing this. Oh, it's just about this. Rather than saying, no, there's something wrong. It is much easier to pluck out the seed of jealousy on the front side than when it takes full root. When it's blossomed into full, blown out jealousy that leads to envy and hatred and discord and all of the things. But we, we make excuses for people and we stay in situations that maybe we shouldn't stay in. And when I mean that, I mean, we allow people to continue on on a path that they shouldn't be. We shouldn't run away from people that are struggling. We should be trying to help them, but we point it out to them and we want them to get it taken care of. Saul, Saul levels up. He's jealous, right, of David because David's getting praise. But then all of a sudden, it turns into anger and hatred. This is where jealousy goes. It turns into anger and hatred. That's what the enemy, again, the enemy seeks to, to devour, to kill and destroy. When you see somebody doing that, that is not a godly thing. It's the enemy doing it. And so we recognize that and we should be pointing it out. Hey, 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 wait a second. You're not acting like Jesus. You're acting like the enemy here. Why do you hate this person so much? But you know that instead we sit, we listen to the words. We listen to the gossip. We let it actually settle into us. And pretty soon we may be facing the same spirit. We may be facing the same oppression because we've allowed it to get in to us. 
We need to be careful about our conversations. We need to be careful about what we're seeing. But we also need to love people enough to say, I don't like what the enemy is doing right now, how he's able to use you. You see, again, where are the people coming to Saul? Now it happens with Jonathan, but where are the other people coming to say, what are you doing? Why are you doing this? But he's the king, so nobody can question him. So let me give you a simple truth. Right? Surround yourself with people who will look at what you're doing and they will question what you're doing. When you start looking more like the enemy than you look like Jesus, when your words start sounding more like the enemy than they do sounding like Jesus, when your actions, words, thoughts are devouring and destroying people, surround yourself with people that will take a, a love interest in you enough to say, hey, maybe this isn't what you should be doing right now. And they would challenge you on these things. Hey, again, we'll see you next time. Simple truth.